rare that the entire 100-member U.S. Senate is called to the White House for a security meeting. That's what's first today on CNN 10. While the subject of yesterday's event was North Korea, much of the information shared with senators was classified, so we don't know exactly what details were discussed in the meeting. There was a statement released by U.S. government officials, though. It said the Trump administration sees North Korea's pursuit of nuclear weapons and intercontinental missiles as an urgent security threat and that the president wants to increase pressure on North Korea to stop these programs. The White House says it wants to do this peacefully with the help of allies like South Korea and Japan, but that the U.S. is also prepared to defend those allies as well as itself. Some of the senators who attended said they were glad to hear the White House's strategy for dealing with North Korea. Others said they learned nothing new. The view from the other side of the Pacific appears to be an aggressive one. Army Day in North Korea, the 85th anniversary of the Korean People's Army. More than a million active duty soldiers, more than six million if you count reserves and paramilitary. One of the largest standing armies in the world. We almost never see this side of North Korea's men and women in uniform. This is a public holiday here in North Korea, which means citizens are enjoying a rare day off. And as you often see on days like this, lots of dancing in the streets carefully choreographed display of national pride. North Korea calls it single-hearted unity. Outsiders say these men and women have no other choice. As Pyongyang residents dance, a very different kind of demonstration on North Korea's east coast. The nation's supreme leader, Kim Jong-un, showing force with what South Korea calls a large-scale artillery drill, less than two weeks after this massive military parade and a failed missile launch. Analysts say these new North Korean missiles could someday carry nuclear warheads to the mainland U.S. Our nation faces serious... A growing arsenal President Trump called a grave threat to the world. He's pushing the U.N. Security Council to punish North Korea for developing weapons of mass destruction that violate U.N. resolutions. In its own show of force, the U.S. deployed a nuclear submarine to South Korea as the U.S., South Korea and Japan conducted joint naval drills Monday. All this as the USS Carl Vinson moves closer to the waters off the Korean Peninsula. The approaching U.S. warships conjure memories for this North Korean veteran. Senior Lieutenant Colonel Un Yong Il speaks to me in front of the USS Pueblo, a U.S. Navy spy ship North Korea captured in 1968. The Pueblo reminds me of another boat traveling very near the Korean waters, he says the Carl Vinson aircraft carrier. We are not afraid. Just like we captured the Pueblo, we can sink that aircraft carrier. It's a threat made by North Korean state media, prompting the Pentagon to warn Pyongyang to stop provoking the U.S. Are North Koreans worried that you may be headed towards war with the United States? It's a grave situation, he says. But we're ready to counter the American threat with an all-out war and nuclear attack. In this militarized nation, even civilians are told they may someday have to pick up arms. Even on days of celebration, citizens say war with the U.S. is always looming on the horizon. The Trump administration has made a new proposal concerning taxes in America. The U.S. Treasury Secretary calls it the biggest tax cut and largest tax reform in U.S. history. But analysts say there weren't enough details in the proposal to know for sure. What is clear is that it would change U.S. tax brackets. Generally, the more money Americans earn, the higher their tax rate, the more they pay in taxes. There are currently seven different income tax brackets, ranging from 10% to 39.6%. The Trump administration's proposal would reduce the number of brackets to three, ranging from 12% to 33%, and decreasing the taxes that most Americans pay. But as far as what businesses pay, from mom and pop shops to law firms, today's top tax rate is 39.6%. The White House plan would drastically reduce that to 15%. It could also reduce taxes owed by companies that do business overseas. The government gets most of its revenue from taxes. Reducing them would mean less revenue. The plan doesn't say how the difference would be made up. And Democrats criticized the proposal, calling it a gift to corporations and wealthy Americans. Analysts call the plan a starting point that the Republican-controlled Congress could use as it develops its tax reform plan. 10-second trivia. What are Saturn's rings believed to be made of? Rock and ice, gas and uranium, iron and ash, or copper?
According to NASA, the rings around Saturn are composed of rock and ice. An unmanned spacecraft named Cassini is attempting to dive between those rings and the planet itself, beginning what NASA calls its grand finale. If everything went according to plan, Cassini shot the gap at a speed of more than 76,000 miles per hour yesterday, and scientists were expecting to hear from it by 3 a.m. Eastern Thursday morning. But there was some uncertainty. At that speed, any debris between Saturn and its famous rings could have completely destroyed Cassini. Scientists are hoping the information it sends back will help them learn about Saturn's gravity and magnetic fields. One of the most iconic moments for Cassini was landing on Titan. We actually had the European probe parachuting down through Titan's atmosphere while Cassini flew over the top picking up those signals and relaying them back to Earth. Enceladus. <laughs> the fact that it could actually have not only plumes coming out, but a total subsurface ocean, it's a global ocean, it's warm, is all of a sudden looking like a place where life could originate. And then Saturn. It is just cyclonic winds, a jet stream size uh, in the hexagon that's two Earths across. For the first time, it'll go through the rings. There's about a 1,250-mile oh, gap in there that we're aiming for. It is a robot. It is out of propellant. It is at the end of its service of life. But you can't help but feeling a certain sense of loss and nostalgia for something you've been Driving, it's like anything else you've, you've had a partnership with for 20 years. For kids and young people, the U.S. government recommends at least an hour of exercise every day. For adults, it suggests between two and a half and five hours per week. It doesn't specify when you should exercise. Experts say just making sure you do it is the important thing. But if you're getting enough sleep, there are some benefits to working out in the morning. Having more energy throughout the day is one of them. How do you get started doing that? I think one of the important things to remember about becoming a morning exerciser is that it can have added benefits both physically and mentally. It's also one of those things that's just easy to check off the list because you know it's likely to fall off your list later on in the day. How do you convince yourself not to hit that snooze button? Well, I'm there. You're there. We've all been there. It goes without saying that the first thing is to make sure you're actually getting enough sleep. We're talking seven to eight hours. And then give yourself a little bit of accountability. Sometimes it's a question of having a friend who's really going to hold you accountable, make sure that you're getting up, make sure that you're doing that exercise routine, and hold yourself accountable as well. Make that deal with yourself. Get that exercise out of the way and reward yourself in small ways throughout the day because of it. Human behavior is pretty simple when it comes to certain things. If we do things that we love, we're much more likely to stick with doing them. Why? You're much more likely to do it for the long run, and that's what can help you live to 100. We'll probably never need to know how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in space, but just so we do, here's Shane Kimbrough, who recently came home from the International Space Station. While he was there, he explained that astronauts don't have bread in space, they use tortillas. And every ingredient has to be taped down so it doesn't float away and get blown around by the air conditioning. As far as eating it goes, that's the same as on Earth. Seeing that'll probably make you aspiring astronauts jelly. But I'm glad we could sandwich that in because man shall not live by bread alone. Opting for a tortilla is anything but a stale idea. And it gives you a sense of the microgravity of the situation when you got to keep all your orbits and pieces from floating off. That's about all I can digest. I'm Carl Azus. CNN 10 returns tomorrow.